Hi, I hope you're all well. If you are new around here, hello, it is lovely to meet you. And if you are returning, thank you very fucking much for coming back. My name is Alana and I'm a 36 year old lady living in Scotland and that is where the accent is from. And on this channel, we predominantly talk all things beauty, hair care, skincare, lifestyle, travelly, bloggery, bloggery, bullshit, with a liberal sprinkling of sarcasm and cynicism thrown in on top. Now, if that sounds like your kind of thing, there is a subscription button in the corner. Give the video a little thumbs up and all that other kind of YouTuber rubbish. This video is going to be all about Studio London which are a brand from Superdrug that have been about for a very long time. They used to do accessories like eyelash curlers, face wash things, sponges, all that kind of stuff. Nail clippers probably as well but now have branched out into colour cosmetics and I have had my eye on them for the better part of three months now I want to say and I've been picking up dribs and drabs along the way. So today we are going to do a full face of Studio London with all of their products. The only thing that I used that was not Studio London was my mascara because at the moment I cannot see them having a mascara on the shelves. So if you want to see how I created this look and what I think of the products and the brand as a whole then just keep on watching. Okay so I don't really know where I'm taking this today. Absolutely loaded with the cold at the moment but feel okay sound much worse than I actually feel but let's just get on this they're going to do a full face almost of Studio London stuff they do have a foundation as well uh, but just from the description of it I thought that foundation is probably not for me so I'm not doing that either but I did get a concealer so we're going to try that and I also have to let you know that I have tried some of these products already there are certain things that'll be like a first impressions for instance this um eyeshadow palette is brand new like it still has this on it I have not tried this yet there are a few things that are first impressions but I have been trying out little bits from this brand now so this is going to be a mixture of first impressions and kind of more long-standing here's what I think about the brand pour out all the stuff that I've got from them. I have kind of been picking it up as I go. Every time I've been in Superdrug, I've thought, mm, what do I fancy, this, that, and the other. Anyway, so we are gonna go on with eyes first. Now these here, the Color Icon Eyeshadow Pigments. I picked these two up first. Uh, this one here is Emerald Mermaid and Gifted Gold. And then I was in again and I picked up Major Magenta, which is just beautiful, so, so nice. But I also picked up this one, which is called Priority Pink, which I've not even opened this one yet. But I have a feeling, is it gonna be like a rosy gold or similar to that of Danessa Myrick's Ballerina? I'm just gonna take the little um, foil bit off first. Right, so no, I don't know if you can see it there, that's the swatch. This is more like a matte color. This does not have any shimmer or sheen to it, which is quite nice for like a base actually. I don't think there's like a definition between this one, the green one clearly has a shimmer to it, and this one here, the pink, is just matte. It does not say on the tube. That would be quite useful, Studio London, just saying. But actually, do you know what this reminds me now? This reminds me of Danessa Myrick's Latte, is it? Very, very similar. So that's quite nice that that's like a matte version. So let me just have a look at this eyeshadow palette. Now, they had three eyeshadow palettes as far as I could see. One was very much my cup of tea, all kind of warm tones, and another was a bit more like just neutrals. I didn't pick up the warm tone one because as you know, I've probably got a fucking million things that are warm tone palettes. And I didn't pick up the neutral simply because, I don't know, how many neutral palettes do you need in your life? I have a couple of good ones and I think that's all I really need. I don't think I need any more. So I picked up this one because I thought this was a little bit more interesting. What I'm gonna say is, I've not, I've not used these yet, is I feel like this color story is odd. There are some beautiful shades in here, but it's odd. I, as a very kind of minimal creative person, think these don't all go together. <laughs> This is not a colour story that instantly I look at and I think, I know what I'm going to do with that. I feel like the colours themselves, uh, let me turn it this way because I feel like it was this way I was looking at it when I thought this. Like these four colours kind of go together, I feel like these four colours kind of go together, these four colours kind of go together, and then there's these ones here in the corner. And I just feel a little bit like, okay, these two go, the blue and the red just... This colour story here in the corner is just very strange to me. I think, what would I do with it? Because this is a real mermaid blue and this is a much more deep navy blue. This is a brown and this is a red. Like, I can see it working, as I said already, like these four kind of work nicely. A very berry tone moment. Even these six on this side work very nicely together. 
These three are a little random, but I can see how this might work a little bit, the kind of greens and the blues, and then some browns to go in with a little khaki moment, maybe. But I just, this corner here just throws me, just throws me ever so slightly. So I did wonder what will I create? And I'm looking at it thinking with these pigments that I've got, do I want to use this nude one to create a little bit more of a muted eye? Or do I want to use the fucking magenta one to do something crazy with that purple in the corner? I am just gonna throw a couple onto my arm as we talk. Uh, they are named, so the first one, the greeny one, it's called Dusk. And that is it there. That is like a two swatch moment. So if I'm honest with you, I'm not super impressed with the swatch on that, but give me a minute. Skyline, which is that real mermaid blue colour, looks pretty impressive. There we go. Skyline swatches a lot better than the green one. And I want to try this purple one as well, because it's also a frosty colour. There we go. So yeah, the kind of purpley pink one as well actually swatches quite nicely. The matte colours, I'm just going to go in with one of the really dark ones here. This is called Dreamer. Actually, relatively smooth. That is it on the top there. Quite impressed with that. So, I think, I think that's it on my fingers. They look pretty impressive on my fingers, but certainly this green one, I'm not super duper impressed with that on first swatch. But I think what I will do is I'm going to go in with a kind of berry toned moment and we will use the magenta. I already spoke about this over my story. So if you have already seen me speak about this, then I'm sorry, I am repeating myself. I actually thought this went on like a dream. And if I just kind of, that is it there on my, it's, gorgeous like the color of this is absolutely stunning so as you can see there the color on this is absolutely beautiful and i done this the same way when i was on instagram that is the close-up of the one i think is very much like danessa's latte by the way but i done this very very similarly on my stories on instagram i'm just going in with this paddle brush and i think i think i'm going to keep it kind of just here on the outer corners and I will show you it is very very pigmented you'll see there and it kind of dries down with a little bit of a metallic finish I would say I am going to go in with a brush that already had some pink shadow on it uh, but this is actually what I used to blend this out and I think when I said to you like it has a little bit of a metallic finish to it it is there but as you start to blend it out it kind of loses that a little bit. These are either really, really good to put down as a base and build on top of, or if you were just gonna place them as a color in the middle. But as I'm sure you will see there, the pigment on them is really quite impressive. So I think that's where I'm gonna leave it just for the idea of a little bit of color on my eyes. And then as I said, I'm gonna go in with this one here, happier. It looks amazing. I think I'm gonna pop that right in the middle. I'm going in with quite a dense, like, paddle style brush. And I think I'm gonna just pop it right here. Now this is a really, this is a really beautiful purple. I don't think, I don't think it's showing up on the camera. It's almost got a little iridescent blue shift it. I'm gonna zoom you in in a minute, so hopefully you'll see. That is stunning. That is really nice. It's got, it's definitely got like a blue iridescent shift to it. Also, what I'll say about that one is, it is definitely very, very pigmented. That is a gorgeous color. That is so, see if you could see, does, can you see the shift in this light? Probably not, I'm really sorry. Oh my goodness, that's so nice. So, I'm just gonna take a clean, fluffy brush and I'm just gonna tidy that up a little bit round about here. That is absolutely stunning. That, I can't get over that shadow, that is really, really nice. And then I'm gonna go into Dreamer, which is this kind of deep berry tone here on a slightly smaller brush and just really gently add it into this corner here. There we go. And again, I think the, the pigmentation of that is really, really good. I think it blended quite easily as well. I am gonna tidy up this outer edge here. It's a little bit patchy from the pigment that I put down, but I think that's quite nice. I'm just gonna soften that edge a little bit. This is definitely more purple and blue toned than I feel it is looking in the camera. I will try and zoom you in so you can see a proper look at it in a moment, but I'm just gonna finish this eye first. 
Here we go. I have turned up my lights a little bit because I was sitting in front of my window and I thought, oh, there's probably enough natural daylight and lo and behold, it has got dark and it's only quarter past three. Not completely dark. The sunlight is coming back in Scotland, but it's got a little darker. So I've turned up my light a little bit so you can see. I have to say, these are lovely. These shadows are really quite beautiful. I am going to try different colours on the bottom because at the end of the day, what is this palette called? I've just realised I've not said. The After Dusk palette. So I definitely think there's an element of like, this is your going out, night out palette type thing. Will I try the blue on the bottom? What do we think? I'm going to try Twilight. I thought Twilight was a matte navy, but it actually looks like there's a very slight shimmer to it. I am going to try Twilight mixed with Dreamer, which is the plum shade I used on the outer corner. So I'm going to go into Dreamer first, this one. And I'm just going to add that to the outer corners here. And the reason I'm going in with this one first, because I just don't want to be a totally stark jump from that to blue. These blend really easily. What I will say is the darker shades do have a little bit of fall down. I haven't put any base on or anything yet, so it's not a big problem. But they do have a little bit of fall down. And now with the same brush, I'm going to go into Twilight, which is this blue toned here. And like I said, I thought that was a matte navy, but actually, I think there's a little shimmer to it. Just very, very... Subtle. And I'm gonna just take that here. And actually the the blue payoff here is pretty good. Really, really good. Again, might look a little dark on the camera, but I feel like it looks really quite blue on my eyes. It looks like a beautiful midnight blue colour. I'm gonna take a little bit of this one. What is this called? Skyline which is definitely much more of your kind of mermaid color, but fuck it, we're just playing today, who cares? I was actually watching Michaela McDade recently and she was talking about how like she was trying some new makeup styles and stuff that she just never thought she would do before and was reminding herself of like, makeup is supposed to be fun, like who cares? And I am all on board for that, all on board for that. So bugger it if this doesn't absolutely match and I look like a little bit of a clown, who cares? All right, so I think you can see the sheen on this one, but what I'm gonna say is, I don't think the sheen on this one is as beautiful as the purple. And I actually prefer the kind of darker navy color under there. So I'm just gonna go back in with Twilight and build that up a little bit more as a navy color. That Twilight shade is stunning. Absolutely stunning. Like a proper, almost royal blue, navy blue with a little shimmer to it. Gorgeousness. And then I'm going to take a clean pencil brush and I am going to go back into that happy hour, the beautiful kind of magenta but blue shift because I think actually that is going to complement that midnight blue, navy blue colour even more because it's almost like a blue purple duochrome. Now this is all very dark and very moody, I get it, it's not everyday wearable. But like I said, I feel like if I hide this part of the palette, if I'd went in with the kind of plummy tones and the purple also on the bottom, it might appear a lot more wearable than the clown-like thing I've got going on at the moment. But where's the fucking fun in that? So anyway, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop on some mascara. As I said, I couldn't see Studio London having any kind of mascara. So I'm gonna go in with instead the Oma by Sharon C Badder Boom Mascara because it is fucking lovely. I'm just gonna curl my lashes. But I am in fact really, really impressed with the color payoff of those shadows. I was, see when I swatched that green one, I was a bit like, these are gonna be shit. But the other ones that I've used actually very, very nice between the mattes and the shimmers. But I think for a palette that again, is this six pound, eight pound or something? I'm gonna put the price here, because you know me. I can never remember the price of things. Everything will be linked down below. I have zero affiliation to Superdrug or to Studio London. This is just purely a my opinion kind of review. And for the price of this little palette, I have to say, actually, I am pretty impressed with the color payoff that I've managed to get from them. Now, do you know what else I think? I think like a really bright electric blue liner in here with this look would just look amazing. I am gonna zoom you in because I do have a brow product from Studio London, so I want to show you that as well. This is the Boss Brow 24 Hour Eyebrow Pen with Micro Blade Effect. Now, why would I need this pencil? I probably don't. As you can see, naturally, I have really big, bushy brows. There's quite a lot of hair there. You know, I had a monobrow growing up as a child. Like, definitely do not need to be adding any hairs on. I usually prefer a gel, but I couldn't see any gel in any of the super drugs that I went into. So, 
What I am going to do instead is like add in where there's maybe like spaces now that I have pushed my brows up a little bit and I will show you the nib. That is it there. As you can see, it's got like three little prongs there. I just don't think it works for the tiny brow I've got. If, like my mum for instance, she has microblading or you have very, very fair sparse brows, this might just do the ticket. But I personally think this just adds nothing to my brows. So if you've got big bushy brows like me, you might want to skip it. So I was trying to do like, you know, actual strokes so that it looks like hair and just kind of upward. I'm going to show you on the back of my hand so you don't think I'm just like being an idiot. That is it on the back of my hand there, um, the little three stroke thing. You can obviously go really, really light, but the heavier you do it, it just basically becomes a felt tip pen. And I personally feel when I do it really, really light, it would either take me ages and ages to actually do it. I feel like I want something a little bit heavier just to add in to the spaces I have in my brows. And because my brows are already pretty dark, this feels like it takes ages to do that. I don't know. I just I don't really think it makes much difference to my brows. But if you were someone who really needed to like pencil in or you had fair brows, then maybe this would work a treat. Oh, this one has went absolutely awry on this side. I also feel like as if this is not going to keep my brows in place the way I want it to, what I need is something to actually like push them up and keep them where I want them to be. I mean, I'm not looking for the super duper laminated effect but I do like them to look fluffy. It doesn't keep any kind of hold on them. Okay, so that is where we're gonna leave the brows because quite frankly, got a little out of control there. Okay, so let me move on to some products that I am absolutely loving from Studio London. This was obviously a bit of a first impressions. I have tried the colour pigments before and I think they're pretty good. Uh, but the cream bronzer is like my best pal. So this is the bronzing cream in number four. I think it is lovely. I usually use it on this kind of a brush. This is the Lara Fay F22. I think it's very nice. Got sent that from Lara Fay and PR. But I just think, considering the price of this little bronzer, is it living up to that of ones that are, you know, 10, 20, maybe even 30 quid more expensive than it is? Absolutely. I think it is lovely. I think as well it is maybe a little more slippery than that of slightly more expensive cream bronzers. I think some cream bronzers can be like a little bit more sticky. I feel that this has got a little bit more of a slip to it than a sticky texture. But this side in comparison to it, it's just gorgeous. It's so, so nice. So I'm just gonna go on to this side and do the same. I would say that this has probably got a little more of a warm tone, undertone to it. As I say, this is number four. I'm sure the one that I looked at that was like the lighter shades just looked like they would probably make me look a little dead though. So that is why I didn't opt for lighter shades. I think I mentioned recently on one of my blush videos as well, if you haven't seen my cream blush videos, I'm gonna put it in the cards here. I think I mentioned recently, like if I use a product that is just a little bit more cool toned, it sometimes makes me look a little dead as opposed to healthy. I think as far as bronzers go, as far as cream bronzers go, this is a beautiful product. Like I cannot fucking rave enough about this. I think it's gorgeous. I have two of the Flaunt Flawless Blusher lip and cheek pigments. They are meant to do both. I've only really used them on my cheeks. This one is Inner Glow. That is it here, it's a nice kind of soft, I would say peach color. And this one here is Passion. I feel like for this look, this one is gonna go a little better, but let me try this one because I haven't used this yet. Can I just swatch them for you as well? Just a wee second. So here is Inner Glow and here is Passion. Wow! Inner Glow is really pretty though. That's really beautiful, like this pretty pop of pink peach colour. So let me try that one on this side first. It's definitely a soft peachy pink colour. It's there but it's very very subtle and on this side i'm going to put passion because i have already used this one and look at it oh, that's so up my street i love it just going to meld that to the bronzer a little bit and then go back in with the bronzing brush to bind the two of them together a little oh my god look at that i think definitely with this eye look 
this blush is definitely a better match, but this is very pretty too. So I'm just gonna go in and equal this out a little bit because obviously this side is a little bit more timid. But that inner glow color, that's something like I would do a kind of, you know, no makeup makeup. If I'm in a rush, I wanna put on a little bit of makeup if I'm dropping Jack off at the nursery or something like that. Or if I just need to get out the house, I've got an appointment with the doctor or something like that. And I thought, I don't wanna go out completely without any makeup, but I don't need anything, just a slick of mascara. And then this inner glow color, very, very pretty. But I have to say passion is a little bit more up my street. But that, mm, love that on the cheeks. Again, I feel like they've got a similar texture to that of the bronzer in that they are a little bit more of a slip texture rather than that of a sticky one. I don't feel like they're sticky on the cheeks, but I wonder if that means like I've not worn these for any longevity. I have probably worn the cream bronzer for longevity and I find that it's okay. I don't know if it's gonna last quite as long as maybe some more expensive ones, but for me, this does the trick. I'm really pleased with it. You could powder and keep it in place if you wanted, but for somebody who doesn't use a lot of powder, I don't anyway. I just like products like this. I really enjoy products like this. Now I am gonna go in with our Flaunt Flawless Concealer. I got the shade Eight, which is a very, very pink base of concealer. Now, I don't think this is the first time I've maybe mentioned this on this channel. I'm just gonna show you there. It's very, very pink toned in the base, which made me very optimistic because I feel that a lot of the time, concealers can really oxidize and go very, very yellow. What I'm gonna say about this concealer is, let me just grab a brush to put some of it on. It's a very, very, like, once it's on there, it's staying on there style of concealer. It's very, very kind of shape tapey, and I find it to be just a little too drying for me. And I'm saying that, and I'm just placing it here because I've got a little bit of redness and stuff from irritation around about my nose at the minute, and I think it covers that beautifully. I have a little tiny like area here where I've got a bit of pigmentation from old blemishes from a couple of years ago and I think stuff like that in this area where I just want to even up the skin tone a little covers that beautifully. But it is going to be a flatter, matter effect of concealer so I think it's very important to remember that. And personally, even as only a 36 year old woman, I do not find this flattering under the eyes. I'm going to place it under the eyes today because, you know, we're using a full face of Studio London. But personally, I would not use this under my eyes on a day-to-day -day basis. I just feel it is that little bit too heavy. It's a little bit Instagram makeup and it just gives you, yes, maybe really good coverage, but a little bit crepe papery underneath the eyes. And once it's down, it's quite difficult to maneuver I feel like it makes me look a little bit more aged under here and just not as flattering. Now, are we worried about aging and what we look like as we get older? The fine lines and wrinkles are there and they're only gonna get worse. No, but if I can wear a concealer that I think makes my under eye look a little more flattering, am I going to wear that? Absolutely, like I'm not gonna wear one that I think makes me look a little bit more paper bag under the eyes. Why would that? I have no reason to. I may as well have nothing on under my eyes because I don't particularly have a lot of darkness, but what I do want to do is just even out under here sometimes and just take away a little bit of the blueness that's in here. And by adding this kind of under this area, I get very dry here. It just isn't the most flattering. If you do want to wear it purely for spot coverage or for hyperpigmentation areas like that on your face, then maybe it would be amazing for you. And especially if you prefer a matte coverage, then maybe you will absolutely love it. Personally, for me, I just feel it's a little too heavy. It's a little too thick. It's a little too Instagram makeup for me. I'm sorry, Studio London. This is probably the one product that I'm like, I really don't like this. This and the brow one, I'm just like, these are not any use to me. I probably won't use them again, but that doesn't mean to say they won't be of good use to other people. And I think other people will give it a shot and really, really enjoy them. Now, lastly, I do have a couple of the lip glosses. Uh, this one here, let me just pop this on. This is Add Charisma. Um, it's just like a kind of corally orange, I want to say. Just a little spot of color, as you can see there. Nothing too crazy. They do, I was gonna say, they do have a scent to them, but my nose is that blocked. Is it vanilla? I can't tell, because my nose is that blocked. I feel like it's just like a sweet, sugary smell. And actually, this with this um, 
I look is pretty because it's not like too much, it's just very nice. But I also bought this one, which is Add Passion, and it is a bright red color. I know this will be shocking to hear me say this, but I can't wait to get my gel nails off. Uh, I need, I've actually got look like a plaster on my thumb at the moment because that one is coming away a little bit and I need to take them off before I go back to work and I'm going back to work in under a month. So I thought I'll get them taken off this weekend. That gives my natural nails a little bit of time to get back to their normal self. But after a year, of wearing nails, like gel nails. I just am dreading it, but I am also getting really fiddly with things, trying to open things, trying to pick things up, all this kind of stuff, it's just doing my nothing. And they're not even that long, but it's doing my nothing. Anyway, so this is Add Passion, as I was gonna say. And actually, I think this is a beaut, look at that. Oh, that is beautiful. Let me just wipe this off and try that one, because that is a beautiful color. Oh, that is gorgeous too. It is red. I think because it's a little bit more sheer, it's not um, like shockingly red. Maybe pulls off a little bit more pinky, but definitely, definitely more red than like the pink that's on my eyes. I find that these are not sticky, but you're definitely aware you've got lip gloss on your lips. Like that's just the way it is with a most lip gloss, to be honest with you. Um, I don't wear lip gloss that often. I usually wear something like a lip oil or a balm. But I think this is really pretty too. It's a lovely colour. Um, I am going to take this off though because I have a couple of lipsticks I want to show you. But I think on the daily, that add motivation or add charisma, that is something I would wear again if I was just rushing to get out of the house. Alongside that Inner Glow Cream Blush, I think those two would be really nice for like a little kind of just simple makeup day. I might actually do that tomorrow, why not? But I have spoke about their 12 hour velvet lipstick before and I love the colour of it, so, so nice. So I thought I would pick up another couple of shades in their 12 hour satin lipsticks and I got the shades Feeling Lively, which is a little bit more of a kind of orangey peach colour. It's a bit more of a muted orange, I would say. It's not like a corally pop of orange. And then this one here in Feeling Sassy, which is a real pinky colour. So I think I'm gonna go in with Feeling Sassy. I also have a couple of lip pencils from them and I picked up the Allure Pink here, which I think again, with a nice neutral look, a neutral eye, whatever, I might do a really neutral look with all this stuff and stick that over on Instagram. So if you're interested, go follow me over on Instagram and you'll see that. Instead, I'm gonna go in with this one, which is Courageous Berry because that is just a little deeper and a little darker for this look. And like I said, this is not one that I'm gonna be wearing out every fucking day, but you gotta have fun with makeup. And I do actually think those lip liners are gorgeous. This is the satin lipstick, as I said, in the pink. And I wore this for like a Valentine's look. Oh my God, it's gorgeous. Gorgeous! And wore this out the other day, found it was incredibly comfortable. Because it's a satin, obviously, it's not like a dry down matte type thing like the velvet ones. But this is so comfortable, very, very pigmented, very, very pretty. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. And finally, their You Do You Bam. Again, I have already spoke about this in a video, so I don't think I have to go into any great detail. But this is like their face gloss. This is like the little kind of topper just to the cheeks here to give you that sheen and dewy look and I have to say I love this. I think this is a brilliant dupe for loads and loads of high-end versions of this. What I will say is I think again that it has a similar texture to the bronzer and the blushes and that it's a little more waxy like buttery feeling and less sticky feeling but the sheen that this gives to the tops of your cheeks and the other thing I'm going to say is it has quite a strong floral scent. That that is a little bit like, that's one of the only things that put me off, but it's not putting me off enough that I don't want to use it. But just be aware of that as well in case you just don't like highly scented products. I find it is quite a strong floral scent off of this. Given the price of all of these products, I am going to put here the total of the price of all the products that's on my face today. Not like, obviously, like I've got two of these lipsticks, one of them, one of them. So everything that is on my face today, I'm gonna put the price here of how much it cost. Now that just goes to show you, even if this eye look isn't like your cup of tea, you're thinking, oh, I wouldn't really fucking wear that out, blah, blah, blah. I know this look is a little out there. It's not gonna be for everybody. But it just goes to show you that you don't need really expensive products to A, get the color and pigment, B, get the finish that you necessarily want. There is loads out there at the drugstore and I think that Studio London are doing a really good job of starting off 
to pick up products that larger companies are only just starting to dip their toe into, like cream bronzers. But places like, I don't know, your Maybelline's maybe, your Max Factors, Rimmel, all that kind of stuff. I feel like these bigger brands that are usually in the drugstore need to catch up with these little brands that are just like, you know what, we're gonna give what the youth want now. Now, I'm obviously not the youth, but I fucking love makeup and I wanna try this stuff now as well. You've got to have fun with your makeup. If you don't have fun with your makeup, what the fuck is the point, to be honest with you? Yes, maybe you want it to make it look a little nicer, blah, 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 but every now and again, just try something a little different. I was speaking to my mum about this. My mum is 69 years old, right? And she was saying, I've done that before. You know, you, you don't know something until you've tried it. And you think, I wouldn't usually do this. And before you know it, you're like, God, I really like how that turned out. You've got to experiment. You've got to try different things. Don't worry about what age you are, whether you think like a woman my age can't be doing this, can't be doing that. Fuck that shit, honestly. I also was speaking quite recently to Michaela McDade as well and the way that... I've just put all this full face of slap on. If I had to go and then pick Jack up from the nursery, would I be washing it all off to go to the school gate, so to speak? Would I be worried about what people were saying about me? Absolutely fucking not. And do I think that the nursery teachers might look at me and think, well, that's something. Do I think they might talk about me in their coffee break? Maybe. Do I care? Absolutely not. So I really hope you've enjoyed this video. I am gonna say that the cream bron the cheek products, the cream bronzers, the dew, the blushes, all that kind of stuff, I love, I love them. The glosses are nice, but I am not a big gloss girl, so I'm not gonna pick up any more of these, and it really just depends whether you're a lipstick gal or a gloss gal, I prefer lipsticks. So I think both the satin and the velvet lipsticks from them are very, very nice, considering they are four or five pound lipsticks. The pigments, I think, are really, really nice. Are they gonna be as good as the likes of a Dennis and my Color Fix? Probably not, and I'm saying that with wholehearted love for the brand. I just think considering the cost of them, economically, they are gonna do a really good job for the cost of them. Are you gonna get better pigment out of a higher end product? Um, even the, the Depexium, is it? Or the Glisten paints that they've just came out as well. Are you gonna get better from a slightly more expensive product? Possibly, but the shimmery ones, gorgeous. I've never tried the matte one yet. I'm definitely gonna try that with that blush and all that other kind of stuff, a really neutral look. I'm definitely gonna do that. Um, but they are really, really nice products. And especially if you're just getting into makeup and you've never really tried a shadow pigment before, you've never tried like cream eyeshadow before, you want a little bit of a base to then put color on top of, or just a little like spotlight of something here. The gold is absolutely stunning. The green one, gorgeous too, but better used as a spotlight. This one here, the magenta one, I have never had a problem with. So I think they are really good, but in comparison to a higher end brand that's doing the same kind of thing, I don't think they're quite there yet, but I think they are gorgeous, gorgeous products for the price of them. And a lot of fun as well. And the eyeshadow palette that I used today, I'm actually really, really surprised with the pigment and the payoff that I've managed to get from it. The only two products that I have used from Studio London that I've been a little bit on the fence about and a bit like, meh, has been the brow product and the concealer. So that ain't bad, considering the amount of products that they have. So I really hope you've enjoyed today's video. I hope I've given a decent overview of the brand. If you have tried any of this stuff or you've been interested in any of this stuff, please comment down below and let me know what your ideas and thoughts are. And I will see you all again in the next one. Bye.